No. Nah. No, nah, I, I don't I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't I don't give a shit. I don't care. Three, two, one. The shit show continues. Arkansas loses again. Year four under Sam Pittman, and this is as bad, maybe worse, than Chad Morris. Year two. Year one. Year two. They were both bad under Chad. Year four. Year four, and this is what you get, man. This is the product that you get on the field. I, like I, I don't I don't what the hell do you say to anybody anymore? What do you say, man? His buyout is uh half off at the moment. I, I mean that's not changing. Arkansas now has to uh win out to make a bowl game. They're not they're gonna be lucky to win another game. This team is hot butt cheek garbage. I they're this is shit. I, I don't I don't know what else to tell you guys. I'm I'm so frustrated. I, you know, I don't, I don't care. You don't want to yell in the mic. I get it. People on the radio, other YouTubers. No one wants to, no one wants to do it. I'll do it. This team sucks ass. They are horrible. What? Thank God. Thank God. Hunter Juracek hired Musselman. That's all I got to say, man. Uh, you know, look, it, it's it sucks because the crowd showed up. Fans deserved a lot better. I mean, they got Mississippi State into some trouble. There's no doubt when they were screwing up, you know, with the with the with the center messing up on the snap and the false starts. The crowd was in it. The students were there. It sucks for the fans that traveled who haven't seen the Razorbacks play since, you know, six years ago. And that's the product you put on the field. That that was the that was it. That was the prep. I I get it. They are they're ready for their bye week. I understand that. They have fought through some shit this year. I get it, man. It's not easy. But that, what I just watched on TV, there's no excuse for that, man. You couldn't score seven points on the worst, on, on one of the worst defenses in, in the SEC? This is, their secondary ranks 112th in the country. Their pass rush, they average like two sacks a game. They don't lead in TFLs. That's not an area that they lead in. They're not great at, at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, there's a lot of movement, a lot of stunts, a lot of twists. You scheme around that stuff. It, it felt like even the announcers were tired of this shit. They were like, what, what, is, what, is, what, is, what, is, what is this? What is this? I don't care. No one else. I don't want to be that guy. I'll be that guy. That was garbage. What we have seen this year since going back to BYU, I said it. Going into the BYU game, there's there are red flags with this team. I mean, I don't I don't know what to tell anybody, man. I, you know, I'm tired of having these conversations with people on the phone and group chats, Discord. Like, I'm tired of it, dude. I, I don't know when people DM me like, Ty, what's the answer, bro? I don't know. What do you got? Changes have to be made. Um, this feels like 2019 all over again, only I'm fatter and I'm 40. Um, I'll be that guy. If those, if no one else wants to do it, I'll be that guy. I mean, it's uh, fans just deserve the players on the field deserve more, you know, the students. The people who buy the merch, who buy the tickets, who go to the games deserve better than that. And that's what sucks, man. Some of you got a long trip home. 
I've read on Facebook uh, some friends from Texas drove up for the drove up for the game to watch this. Um, I, thank God for Musselman. Thank God for Dave Van Horn. And I know if you if you don't make the College World Series, you know Dave Van Horn's a bum. Blah blah blah. What people say, but it's like yeah, but it could be so much worse. And I get it. Dave Van Horn's been coaching for a long time. I get it, but still. You know they're going to live up to the. Usually they're going to live up to the regular season expectations. You know he can at least get you get you in a position. You know the product on the field or the product on the court, whether we're talking basketball or baseball. You know what you're getting with that product on the field and on the court. It's going to be pretty good. Yeah, last year in the regular season didn't turn out the way we wanted to for basketball. You finished down the line in the, in SEC play, but. The part that fans also want to see, and, and mostly you'll, a, you'll ask people what matters more, what you do in the regular season or what you do in March, people who know basketball will tell you what happens in March. And that's where Musselman performed. Um, it has performed. You know what you're getting. This year, with football the last two years, and I said this since the Liberty game, that Liberty game last year just drew up a lot of red flags. And people told me, listen, Ty, that, you know, Liberty's good. You know, Hugh Freeze was putting on a performance so he can get hauled off by another team. And that certainly worked, didn't it? It certainly worked, didn't it? Sam ain't it, man. This ain't it. This is not it. Um... I, I don't I, I, I don't know. Um I can't believe how bad they were on offense. I God. If you're gonna tell me that some stunt and twisting is what did that offensive line in, oh wait, no, that shouldn't surprise anybody. That shouldn't surprise anybody. Shout out to Patreon supporters. You guys have stuck through all this, man, and I appreciate you guys. Again, we're going to have some more Patreon content. It looks like we're going to need to start firing up. We're going to have to start adding some more coaches to the coaching list that's available on Patreon. Assuming it's assuming they make a change, God only knows what they actually do in the offseason, but if they make a change, we're going to be tracking planes. We're going to be we're going to be all over it in Patreon, so make sure you you're there for that. And of course, the transfer portal stuff. I mean, that's Really, Patreon, that's where it kills. And, and if you are a Patreon supporter, you need to be in Discord. That's where a lot of the stuff is going down. Also, we have uh, exclusive interviews that are be that will be uploaded on the Patreon site. Uh, four and eight, here we come. Bro, I, I mean, do you think they could – I mean, do you confident – can you say with confidence that they could beat FIU? Can you say that with confidence? I mean, really? No. No, you can't. This is a this is a trash football team. They're trash. They're not good. You know, don't give me all you got to take it easy on the players. I'm not trying to be hard on the players. I'm just telling you what they are, what this team is. This coaching staff is inept. Dan Enos. Oh, my God. Um... Man, he's it's so bad. Even Mike Irwin's taking shots at the offense on Twitter. I mean, it, it, I can I can only imagine what message boards are saying. I mean, it's it's um, I don't know. I I just didn't imagine that I would be right here again. I didn't imagine that after the more I thought the more stuff was in the past. I, I knew it was always a possibility that they may struggle, but not to the to that level, and they may have sunk even further. Two and ten has has taken a seat at the table and has been there now for a few weeks, and it's now promptly move up to the front. I mean, it's it, guys, nothing is a given. I got super chats to get caught up on here. I appreciate the super chats. Uh, all the more frustrating. State was trying to let us back in the game. Everyone torched their defense, but us this year. Appreciate that, Terser. Mr. Uh, Razorback Red with a $5 super chat. That's cool. You got a little emoji there. That's neat. I can't do anything with it. Like, what is that? Like a, is that like a veggie tail? What is that? <laughs> Sanders Prize with a $2 super chat. Thanks for keeping it real, tie. Respect. Uh, hostile Bogey and Bound. I like that name. $5 super chat. Even when the other team screws up, it hurts us. That fumble was wild. That fumble was wild. I've never I, – I heard the whistle. 
And they really let that play go on for a while until that whistle was blown. Um, Hire John Gruden, says Matthew Marsh. (laughs) Guys, that ain't happening. They're (laughs) They're not bringing in John Gruden. I don't know that he wants to deal with recruiting and all that stuff. Uh, Camo Gang says, told y'all on Dan Elos. At this point, KJ couldn't pin a tail on the donkey. I don't know. I'm going to be curious what PFF says about his clean pocket percentage. It wasn't good. It, I mean, I couldn't have been, it couldn't have been 50%. I, I don't know. I mean, I'd have to go back and rewatch the game, but I, I don't know. I thought he struggled with a clean pocket as much as he did when he was under pressure. And you guys that want Criswell to play, what the hell is he going to do? I mean, he's going to have someone in his face about every other snap or every snap. FIU will be coming into Fayetteville with a with a better record than us, I guess is what Gavin was trying to say there. Um, we got some more super chats. Arkansas defense played their tails off. That's what I hate. That's That's what I hate. So much, man. Those guys leave it all on the field. They play the defense and the special teams just play their ass off. Although I don't know what's going on with punt return blocking. No one is helping Centennial out on punt returns. He's not getting an opportunity. You got to give credit to the opposing punters, but Centennial is not given any opportunity, and he hasn't for a while now. But um, and kick returns is kind of the same way. But I don't know. Thank God for Cam Little kicking field goals, I guess. I, I you know, again, they just it's it's more and I'm not faulting that field goal, but I, I did I had that same vibe that I had with Alabama where they were playing not to lose. Bench KJ the rest of the year. I think we win four games, no lie. I don't know how you're getting that at all. Smock, I don't know where you're getting that at at all, man. I really don't. I mean Criswell might maybe he's better with a clean pocket, but he's he's gonna get he's gonna get murdered back there, man. Oh, I said murdered. I'm gonna get I'm, YouTube's going to come cracking down on me. Um, nobody has time to throw the ball. Receivers don't get separation. You heard the announcers talking about it. I've been saying it for weeks. I've been saying it since going back to BYU or even before that. Nobody gets separation downfield. And then they stand around when KJ runs. Like They're, not, they're just not well coached. They're not well coached. Penalties have come down a little bit, but... Penalties are absolutely a reflection of coaching. Now, you could say, well, you know, how so? Well, we saw it when they cleaned it up. They were able to fix that in practice. You do that. That's just the natural evolution of, of coaching throughout the season. You fix the issues. You know, you make it a priority in practice. You work on it however you want to do that, and, and you fix them. And they have gotten better in that department, but nothing else has gotten better. The offensive line is not better. The offensive line is, is – um, Offensive line is, is cheeks. KJ eight it, period. Smock, listen, nobody is it. Nobody is it, man. Nobody. Maybe Criswell could come out and look a little better. Maybe he'll have some better moments. I don't know, but he will get killed. The offensive line does not give him time. They don't give him time for plays to develop. Now, KJ struggles. I just sat here and told you about his clean pocket percentage. It's not been good all year. No one is going to excel at quarterback. Not with Dan Enos and not with this offensive line. Period. Period. Guyton and Kennedy need to go. I don't know what's – why aren't we calling out Guyton more? Like, bro, what are you guys doing Monday through Thursday? Like, why why are your receivers – I guess it just goes back to where these guys came from, Division II and whatnot. I, I don't know. Um This team is, <laughs> yeah, um, office is a joke. I don't know. Oh, I think you meant offense. You're probably using that speak to talk, aren't you? You're doing what Archie 56 does. You're doing what my dad does. You're doing the voice to talk, aren't you? Um, there's a lot of chat going on. If, again, if you guys want your, your comments read, I do read all – of super chat and we've had several i think that was caden's first super chat caden jowers it says celebrate first super chat so hey way to go man appreciate you um 
The stands will be empty. I, I don't know what to. I don't know what to expect. I, I mean, I was surprised at how many people were there. I was surprised that the crowd had the effect that they did late in the game. I mean, you got to give them credit, and that's what that's what sucks for these guys. That's what sucks for the fans. That's what sucks for the players. It's like you can't hold all the players responsible. I mean, you want to, and I get that, but the coaching staff at the end of the day, they didn't have these guys ready. They didn't have these guys ready at all. And, and again, it's just a, it's a reflection of what's happening. It's a, reflection of what's hap- it's a reflection of what's happened so far this year. The offense isn't ready. The defense is. Defense and special teams are doing their part, but nobody has the offense ready to go. And that's a reflection on Dan Enos. Does anything happen? Does anything happen? Should anything happen? I know the majority of you will say, yeah, fire everybody right now. Get rid of them. I'm going to tell you that's probably not going to happen. I, I mean, maybe if going into the, to the, to the Mizzou game, maybe we see what they did in 2019 where they just, when they get rid of uh, Chad and Barry Lenny took over as the interim, maybe it could get that bad. I don't know. You know, they fired Bielema. Now, that wasn't Hunter Yurchak, but uh, they fired Bielema as he was <laughs> walking off the field. Uh, I mean, I I don't know what Hunter does. I can't read his mind. I have a feeling Hunter's going to look at this as a, you know, as you would want your athletic director. You, you want him to be rational. You want him to have a good understanding of what's going on, of course. Nobody knows more about what's really happening with this team than probably Hunter, right? I mean, Hunter uh, knows the sport well, and I have a feeling he knows what's going on with this team, and he, he probably gets it. He's going to have to take a rational approach to how to handle this situation. But fans are furious. I don't know why I can't scroll chat. Hang on, let me refresh this. I can't scroll chat at the moment. Well, YouTube, way to go. Way to go, YouTube. You're awesome. Let me refresh this, see if I can get this to work. Um, we got some more super chats. Wow, uh, that 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 was like a last Boy Scout gut punch. We did not need whooping suey, go hogs. Now on the hundred year check to make the change, to make a change or own the performance. I. Someone's gonna have to come out, man. I mean, this is this has gotten to the point where someone's gonna have to come out and make a statement. Someone from the university. It's and it's got to be Hunter or it's got to be Sam. They have to figure out. Like, listen, what I would like to see from the from from Hunter, whether it's a a community note, you know, one of those from the desk of the athletic director, whatever. I'm aware of what's happening, and we're gonna assess this as. As the year plays out, we I think fans deserve that much. Uh, Hot Rod Fuller with a twenty dollars super chat. I'm on a flight headed back from Italy, watching the game on my phone. I yelled so loud, I thought they were going to kick me off the plane. But they asked if I was if I was uh, football footballs. I don't know football soccer. No, I said pee wee football. Sure felt like it. Hot Rod Fuller, thank you for the super chat, man. Uh, Willow Main LaFlair. That's a very awesome wrestling like name. Are you a wrestler, sir? I say either Sam Pittman or Enos or Hunter fires Sam. Okay, either either Sam fires Enos or Hunter fires Sam. What's your opinion, by the way? Love the show. I appreciate you, man. W- Willow Main La- 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 Well, I can't see the rest of the name. That's a cool name, though. LaFlair. There it is. Willow Main LaFlair. That sounds like a really badass wrestler. I don't know, man. I I don't know if you miss a bowl game. We were talking about what a failure of a season is and what it looks like and what it means. Missing a bowl game year four is a failure of a season. That's a failure. Now, we talked about this last week. Someone said, well, maybe they could flip. and They're going to win out and they're going to win seven. Obviously, that's not happening. But that comment was made and someone in chat said, well, Seven is, is, is a failure. No, this is a failure. And what is about to probably happen is a failure. I think, if anything, Hunter Yurichek is putting out the feelers. I think he is certainly looking around. I, I believe that's – or if he hasn't, he's going to be now. The pressure's on. This is when the merch sales stop. This is when people stop coming to games, and that's not a good look for the university. Um, I got so bored trying to watch that game. That was, that was one of the – Gavin – That game was terrible. There was nothing about that game entertaining. I mean, the fumble was like the biggest play of the game, and it wasn't even a fumble. 
I definitely aren't going bowling now. Forget that. Well, right, Bobby. I agree. That's what I was saying. They're not, that's not happening. Hogwater trash. We as fans deserve better, says James Swope. I, I didn't actually hear the Payless Shoemate comment. I think I, I think I got up to – I must have walked out of the room when he said that, but I wish I'd heard it. I knew immediately when they missed the field goal we weren't going to do squat on offense. I agree, Smock. I agree 115%, bro. I agree. I knew. I, I knew. Oh, okay, our offense is going to get another shot to do what? Shit the bed. That's what they did. I have no idea, Jeremy, how many were in the stands. I, I don't know. I didn't get a real good – I've seen some pictures. I've seen some some video. It looked like they actually did have 60,000 but I or 60 or more thousand, but I don't know. We know that there's – they love to talk about tickets sold, but I don't know that they ever come out and say, well, these are the amount of tickets scanned, and that's what we don't know. Um, I don't know who gets me to the bottle first, my hogs or Steelers. Woo pig suey, baby, praise must. Let's hire Gus, says Matt. <laughs> I'm at the point where I'm like, you know what? Fayetteville High is uh, undefeated. They just beat the living crap out of Springdale last night. What's so? Uh, what's happening over there? <laughs> I mean, it's so bad. Obviously, that's a joke, but I it it is it's it's bad. Here we are again, man. Here fans are again. The all G shucks. Oh, grab old can of beer or uh, old cold beer. Turn the jukebox on. All that stuff is gone. No one cares about that anymore. It's not going to win over the fans. They're done. They want wins. It's year four. Mike Elko, you need a job. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Bobby Trino, mistakes are forgiven. Bring him back. What did Fish say? Fishman, three years straight? I don't, I don't know what he said. Went to Alabama game last week and watched us go almost two quarters with three and outs. Generally watched the entire game. Blah, 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 blah. For a multi-million dollar program of coaches and players. See, that's what's crazy. The defense and special teams play so well, they keep you in these games. Punter can flip the field, right? Cam Little can kick 60-yard, 55-yard field goals. Defense is going to show up. They're going to make big plays. They're either going to force takeaways or they're going to get key three and outs. You know, they're going to cause, you know, they're going to interrupt the dynamic and the timing between the quarterback and the receiver. They're doing those things. And they did that against Bama. And then today, you needed the offense like you've needed them for seven weeks, and they couldn't show up. Like, this is a reflection. This is, and I know Sam has got to feel it, this is Craddock, Chad Morris level of bad. I'm not going to say, because I, I can't read anybody's mind. I can sit here and tell you what I think they should do. I, I, do I think Sam fires his buddy, Dan Enos? No, I don't. Should he? Yeah, I think he should. Let someone else, uh, T-Dub, who's not in, he's, I don't think he's in here right now, but he brought up something really, it was a good point. Let the guy that knows his players, knows the offense, knows his running backs, Jimmy Smith, let him call the plays. Let him call the plays. Let him call the plays. Can you do any worse than what they've done so far? You're not going to go out and hire an offensive coordinator right now. You're not going to do that. So just give it over to Jimmy Smith. Go, give it to a guy that's been here that knows hell of a recruiter, hell of a, of, a, of a developer of talent. I'm not putting what's going on with the running backs. Don't get me wrong. They have their issues. Picking the wrong lanes, that stuff, is it, it's not good. But Jimmy Smith, up until this year, I think he's done a really good job of developing these guys. It's not his fault. The offensive line is pure cheeks. You know, it's I, I don't know whose decision it is to keep giving DeBinion the ball. I have no idea. We got more super chats here. <sighs> um, keep the defense and special teams. Make Travis William head coach. I mean, at this point, I, I don't know that there's a – well, I mean, there are bad suggestions, I guess. Uh, Ty, Sam was just asked about offense – Offensive staff and decisions, and he said, with a bye week, I've got tough decisions to make. He said that, huh? Oh, boy. 
Rob R with a five dollar super chat. Thank you for the uh, super chat, Tim. Uh, when when they show coaches on opposing teams, coaches they look like they are coaching, moving or screaming. They show Sam and he looks uninterested. I don't know. Listen, I'm not. I know that, and I appreciate the the super chat, Rob. I get that fans want to pile on and say that ah, oh, Sam doesn't care, and and uh, you know the defensive stat or the uh, Dan Enos doesn't care. I don't believe that. I just simply believe that what they're doing isn't working, and there's no effort to change what we're seeing. There's no effort. You're gonna tell me that stunning and twisting and a little bit of movement affected that offense that much guys Mississippi State defense is terrible they're not good their secondary is like the second worst in this league and they still couldn't move the ball you know KJ completed something like 11 straight throws but I think he had a total of 40 yards how many behind the line line of scrimmage throws did we see today it felt like about 15 I called it I called it on Friday. I said the opening play has been behind the line of scrimmage throw. His scripted plays are, they're not even mid. They're not even mid, as the kids would say. They're they're just flat cheeks, man. Y'all Paul drive the like button. I haven't, yeah. Hit the like button, share the content, subscribe. Um, I haven't even gotten into numbers. I don't know if I want to get into numbers other than to just laugh and to feel pain at the same time. Uh... Direct service overhead, garage door company. They operate out of central Arkansas and in northwest Arkansas. Better than best results. Hundreds of five-star reviews. They installed my door. Fantastic job. I love my door. Love my door. Uh, Check out their link provided for you down below. Um, Direct service overhead, the garage door company. I was trying to pull up uh, another stat sheet here. Also, the Odd Soul Craft Bar and Pizzeria on. Uh, listen, I know some of you are in town. Go hit up the Odd Soul. Go drink your sorrows away. It's a great place to do it. Great environment. They're on Emma Street in Springdale. Tell them Ty sent you. Say, oh, Tuss Talk with Ty sent me. I'm here to drink my sorrows away. I hear you guys have some good stuff. Got some good local IPAs on tap. Check out the odd cell. Their, their uh, link is provided for you also down below. If you want to take a look at their menu, it's also there. I did some quick math. Uh-oh. Justin Kipper, who's a member. Shout out to the members. The Hogs have scored 212 points so far, and Cam Little scored 58 of them. Cam has had only one chance to s- score today and did so. Love you, Ty. Thanks for letting us vent. Man, we all vent together like, like – uh, it's been stated before. This is as much therapy for me as, as it is you. There's definitely emotions involved. But I'm going to tell you right now, you, this can't be tolerated. I just can't. And they're going to have to make some tough decisions. Now, I don't know if – so Sam said that today in his post game. Is he talking about benching starters? Is he talking about firing somebody? Is he talking about making some changes somewhere along the line? I don't know what he means by that, but I know what he – I hope that he means – they they have to, they have to they got to pull the trigger on something here. Uh, this is worse than Chad Morris. I, I I just did not imagine that Arkansas would be this bad. This was a tweet by Andrew Hutchinson earlier today. Now I don't I think he made this about twenty minutes into the ball game, and he says uh, dating back to the LSU game, Arkansas's gotten inside the opponent's ten yard line eight times. The Hogs have two touchdowns and six field goals. On those possessions. You know, it's crazy. You had that opening drive by Mississippi State picked off by Walcott, you know, and then there was, listen, I like that they tried to move the pocket a little bit. They did. I'm going to give them credit. We saw them finally try to move the pocket, but then KJ uh, couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. Uh, Just nothing works for these guys. Nothing. And that's why I don't know what the answer is. Again, Criswell, it might be Criswell. My problem with that, though, is he doesn't have, he doesn't run with authority. I don't believe, anyways, what little film we've seen of him running. He doesn't run with authority the way KJ does and that the way that KJ's had to, right? We've seen him break tackles in and outside of the pocket. I don't know if Criswell has that in him to do it. He's going to need it. He's going to need a wing and a prayer because he's going to get sacked. 
I mean, again, Mississippi State, a very average team when it comes to getting after the quarterback. What'd they do today? What'd they have? Five sacks? Four or five sacks? They average two a year? I told you guys, double that number. I said that Friday. Double that number. <laughs> I don't know that Chris... You know, what are the, what are the options in front of the offensive line? It, is this a personnel issue? Is this a talent issue? Is this a coaching issue? Is it D all the above? I understand everybody wants to circle D all the above. I, I don't know. I can't imagine them stepping this far back, as far, you know, from a talent standpoint compared to what they did a year ago. To me, it screams coaching. It screams coaching. I don't know. With a, I, I, is that Kennedy's fault? Is that Enos's fault? Is that Pittman's fault? At the end of the day, Pittman definitely owns some blame for sure. Um. We not hiring a big time head coach, Ty. Okay. All right. I mean, I didn't. I don't know that Sam. Listen, I don't know what Hunter does. I think he's going to take a rational, a rational approach. I don't see him firing. I'm not saying that he should or shouldn't, but I, I don't see him firing Pittman. So I'm not making that claim. I'm saying they're going to need a, they're they're going to need to change. Whether it's offensive line coach, whether it's Enos, the change has to be made. No, this isn't getting better. This isn't getting better. It's not hard. It's not hard to stump this offense. It's not hard. Like I think we could scheme together. I think we can grab some people out of chat. I think we could scheme a way to stop Arkansas's offense. I, I, maybe that is a reflection of talent to a to a degree, but I. I, I I think it's just a reflection of coaching. Seems like KJ's just disinterested. Man, he's looked that way, Mike, for years, though. He's He looked that way his first game against Mizzou. I mean, he's always had that look on his face. There's no way he's, he's you know, I think if anyone wants to get it fixed, I think he wants to get it fixed. I can tell you, at practice, going back to spring camp, he looked that way. Last year, he looked that way. I kind of thought, I kind of wondered if he, he resembled Matt Jones because Matt Jones had that reputation. Uh, I'm just annoyed, Ty. Sorry, I love your show, though. No, I hear you, man. I mean, we're all, everyone's frustrated. I wouldn't be bragging about how many Skittles I eat anymore. <laughs> well, I don't know. Is it him doing that or is it the announcers? Jeremy Gray, Ty, I don't, what I don't understand is how many did not notice this weeks ago, even dating back to last year. Why do we have why do we have to hit rock bottom? The Enos hire is a hundred percent on Sam. There is no escaping that. The Enos hire, the the biggest problem with this football team is the offense. Sam made that hire. Hunter Yurchek didn't make that hire. Nobody whispered in his little ear. No, he made that hire because he said, I thought he was a hell of a football coach. And what's happening, what's happening right now, it's all it's it's on the offense. Everything else, is I think, is good to go. I think everywhere else, this team is good to go. It's the offense that is the problem. Captain Mike says, bull, bull, bull. What's bull? Yes, Ty, here is the scheme. Burn. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, Ty, here's the scheme. Bum rush the offensive line. That's really about it. Send four. All you got to do is send four. Hell, you could send two, and you're going to get pressure. They're they're bad all along the offensive line. There is no strong there is no strength on this offensive line. I mean, I saw Braum get destroyed in the second quarter. I, there is, there just, there are no strengths with this team. Ty, if we lose out, do you think Coach P deserves another year? No, I don't. No, no. If you lose a bowl, if if you don't make a bowl game in year four, that's a failure. Could have just kept Kendall. I think I think Kendall kind of wanted out. I mean, I, if I'm being real, I don't I don't know that keeping him was really on the table. Um, Enos and Pittman are wiping their their tears with Benjamin. <laughs> uh, 
uh, I only ask if he deserves another year because of the coaching changes he's made on defense. It's still it's still not enough to offset how bad this team has sunk in his fourth year, right? Um, the offense is you know that's when the rubber meets the road, right? When when your offense struggles the way that it does, and you and you lock the brakes on the offense, or 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 the offense slows down the bus, you know, um, it it brings everything to a grinding halt. Now it could be worse, right? The defense could be could be like what we saw last year. Um, at the end of the day, yeah, he made he made great hires on defense. I told you guys, I loved what he was doing on the defensive side of the ball. I bragged on that all off season. I was really thrilled about what they were doing on the defensive side of the ball with what they were doing in the secondary. There was definitely an attempt to fix what was going on there. Unfortunately, he made a good old boy hire on the offense, and it has cost him wins. So at the end of the day, I mean, it sucks because, yeah, there is a likelihood if you fire Pittman, you're not getting this defensive staff back. I'm saying it's a likelihood. I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but it's a likelihood that nobody's coming back off that staff. Now, maybe you promote somebody. Maybe you maybe you make someone off that defense, the head coach. I, I don't know. I mean, crazier things have happened. There is the who you're going to get crowd, okay? The who you're going to get crowd isn't necessarily wrong. Arkansas, and I know this ruffles feathers every time I say it, it is not a destination job. Coaches know it's a hard job, it's difficult to recruit there, and it's difficult to play in that conference. Now you got Oklahoma and Texas coming over. It's not a super sexy job. I think Houston Nutt did a good job of kind of making it look a lot better, you know, and then you know, that that propped you up to hire someone like Bobby Petrino, um, you know, and you were able to bring Bill in, uh, Bill in a couple of years after firing Bobby Petrino, but uh, it's not a super sexy job. It's, and that's what sucks about all this, you know. Um, they. I don't know. And so the who you going to get crowd isn't necessarily wrong. But at the same time, we'd be having that same conversation if you brought him back for a fifth year. You're still going to always have that who you going to get. It's a dice roll no matter what. We got another super chat here. Uh, again, just <laughs> stanky, panky, pew, pew, pew. Imagine offense scoring zero points. Yeah. Cursor, you're not wrong, buddy. You're not wrong. McFadden ain't walking through that door. <laughs> Hire Brady. I mean, they're desperate. I, I think they will be desperate. And that's probably, if there's anything that keeps Sam here another year, it's probably that. You know, but I would argue you're going to be in the same seat in year five. You're going to be in the same seat if he doesn't get this changed. Um, my real opinion of the offense would require NC 17 ratings is Mark Douglas. What's going on, Mark? Hey, if you guys want to join the Patreon, man, I would really appreciate to help promote this small business. Um, I'm, I'm going to be here. I'm watching every snap. I'm doing post games next weekend. I'm going to do a, uh, we're going to do a side-by-side -side watch of, of Arkansas and Purdue next Saturday. I'm going to be with the Don't Read the Podcast. or I'm sorry. Don't Read the Comments Podcast. I'm so – the offense is I'm – blaming, I'm blaming Enos for me messing up today, man. It's his fault, damn it. Um, I'm going to be with them next weekend. We're going to watch the Purdue game together. We're going to live stream it, so make sure you're here for that. It'll be fun. Basketball is what we got, baby. Purdue's going to be a hell of a – that's going to be a very interesting mix to see how they respond. You know, they absolutely torched last night against UT Tyler. Um, KJ's a crash dummy. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, Discord – Patreon Discord is going to be wild for a coaching search. We've never had – like the setup, we're, it's going to be on. I can't wait. I can't. Like I think it's going to happen. I really do. I, I don't know – because I don't see this team winning five games. And like I said, going back three or four weeks ago, the further south you go of six wins, 
the less likely I think Sam returns. Now, again, there is a scenario where if he wins five, I could see them twisting and turning this thing all kinds of different ways. Oh, well, look, you know, the injuries and, and this and that. And oh, 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 oh the, the away games, blah, 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 blah. We got to give him another year. I, I, could, I could see that happening. I really can. But I feel like this team's going to end up going four and eight. And I think changes are going to have to be made. I think that's that's a given. It's a given. Not a big primetime fan, but he but he can. Oh, but he he could probably keep recruits and rock the portal. I think he's going to be at Colorado for a little while longer. Hunter showed he's not afraid to fire that ass. <sighs> You know, Sam is his hire. I I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, one, on one hand, I say he's I don't see him winning four or five. And I can't see Sam returning. But I again I just also see the on on the other hand, the excuses churning and burning. Uh Smock says four and eight to five and seven. Criswell Criswell was to the game way three and nine with KJ. I want to know what you're seeing with Criswell, bro. I, I Smock, I really do. Like, what evidence do you have that suggests that he's a better option than KJ? Like, I get it. KJ's been cheeks. I I agree. But one of the decide two of the deciding factors are things that are outside of his control. Wide receivers are not getting open. They're not creating separation, and the offensive line is cheeks. Running backs struggle to block, and they struggle to uh, to pick the right lanes to run through. I don't know, like, how does Criswell fix all of that? I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's unlikely. I don't know that Criswell's a better option. I really don't. So you're you're gambling that he could throw more than twenty eight yards. That's why you go with Criswell. It's the DBs for sure, Ty. They're the problem. <laughs> o line is uh, Duke. Oh, gross, gross, gross. Pat Roton says he's a better quarterback than KJ. Man, come on, Ty. Come on. Okay, I'm at practice. I'm there Monday and Tuesday. I've missed maybe two, three practices all year. Criswell, last week, overthrew a wide open, wide open Andrew Armstrong down the sidelines last uh, Tuesday in fastball. I saw it. I've seen him do that a couple times. He had a clean pocket. Now, I have seen him tear it up. What you guys are basing what you know off of Criswell, I want to know where you're finding, where is that content that tells us or the video footage that Criswell is a far better option than KJ. And he might be. What I'm suggesting and what I'm telling you, this offensive line is not going to do him any favors. These wide receivers are not going to do him any favors. These running backs are not going to do him any favors. The guy that has given you the best chance to win games, despite them not winning games, has been KJ. That's what the staff, this is why you're going to see KJ. They feel like, and I think they're probably right, they feel like KJ gives them the best chance to win. I agree. I think Criswell probably could operate the offense better, but that's assuming all these parts are working better. And the thing that KJ does well, he can improvise, take off and run and pick up a first down. He can run through a defender. He can improvise out of the pocket. Now, I agree, Criswell might be built better for this offense, but I don't know, given the set of circumstances that they have to deal with, I don't know that Criswell will get an opportunity because he's going to get killed. He's going to get killed. This offensive line is horrible. I think that's the part you're not, like you're just, oh, well, it's all, it's all KJ. Throw KJ out and we're going to win. We're going to win out. No, I'm telling you, it's just not that. It's not that simple. It's not black and white, fellas. You need a guy faster and more elusive. Criswell is not that much more elusive, my guy. I, I, I mean, if if I'm going to give him credit anywhere, I think he throws a sharper ball. That's something that stood out in camp. I thought he threw a sharper ball. I thought he looked he looked good throwing over the middle of the field. Um, 
could connect, good timing with his receivers. You know, but I also saw him panic as soon as someone was in his face. I also saw him overthrow targets downfield. I saw him throw the ball too hard on short yardage throws. I mean, I've seen him make these mistakes going all the way back to spring camp. He looked horrible at the beginning of spring camp. Now he got better and he got sharper towards the end of spring camp. Uh, he was a lot better. He was a lot sharper. I'm not disagreeing that he might be the better option in this offense. Again, it's about the parts that are operating within the offense. Those cogs, those bolts, those cogs, those things that are trying to operate the offense, they're not working. Dan Enos is doing this team no favor. There's no favors being done on the offensive side of the ball. Maybe they make that change. Maybe they do go to Criswell, and maybe you guys are right. I'm just telling you, based on what I know and based on what I've seen, I don't know. You could throw him out there, give him a shot, okay? He's going to get killed. He's going to get sacked a lot, probably more than KJ does. I'm almost willing to put money on it. If he got the same amount of playing time in these last games, he'd get sacked as much or maybe more than, than KJ. Um, I just don't I don't think it's going to work the way you think that it will if they if they trot Criswell out there. It doesn't matter. You could have Michael, you could have vintage Michael Vick back. Okay, no, that's different. Okay. I, vintage Michael Vick might be the answer, but he's not walking through those doors. You know, sucks, terrible hire. I mean, and now unless you want to make a change at OC, then we could talk Criswell. Um, well, we can watch Bama and Tennessee. Yeah. You know. I mean, Kapeski, how many run did did you watch him play? I mean, he had a couple of really good runs. He had at least three runs for first downs. Like, what do you see? You're doing that thing again, Kapeski, where you don't really watch the game, but you just come in and assume. Maybe the guys don't want to play that hard for KJ. I don't know. Barry Lenny's OC is the answer. What's what's Illinois' offensive rank? Aren't they pretty bad on offense? I mean, I don't know. Um, do we want to get Criswell hurt <laughs> this year is the real question. If he's the future for next year. Yeah. I there I think they there will be an opportunity, I think, when he comes out and plays, and maybe he'll have a good maybe he'll have a good couple of drives. Um, but I, I'm just not sold that he's the answer. Calvin Meredith says Lenny is not, I say, not the answer. Yeah, I don't think their offense is worth a flip. I th- a lot of people turn that, and maybe they're right, that Brett Bielema is kind of, you know, doing what Bielema does best and, and really clamping on uh, clamping down on, on his ability to call plays, that he was, he was way more effective where he was at before. I don't know. I... I don't know what the case is, and and I mean, you never know what they do. I, it wouldn't shock me at all if they went after Barry Lunny. There's a connection there. Stop mentioning Barry Lunny. That's idiotic, says Josh Huffman. I just, I don't think that that's the hire. If if they did, that I don't know. Um, I think Barry would come back, but yeah, I don't, I don't see that. I don't see that happening. And I, I their offense is not effective at Illinois. And it wasn't last year either. Their defense is great. Uh I'd be disappointed in that hire personally. I Yeah. So who's taking the job? That's the question. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if anyone's even getting fired. You know, his play calling reminds me a lot of Jim Chaney in 2014. It's not even that. It's not even that. It's worse than that, Preston. Neither neither one can coach a fly into a pile of horse shit, much less an offense in the end zone. That's pretty good. I almost want to pin that. <laughs> Thank you for proving my point, Kapeski. If you didn't watch the game, how the hell do you know? The final score shows me that. KJ's not the answer. Dude, nobody's the answer right now. This offense is not the answer. 
Like, what are you smoking, Kapeski? Put the put the pipe down, bro. Nothing is working for these guys. And putting Criswell in is not, I'm telling you, I don't think that's the answer. The answer is going to be a change at offensive coordinator and going into the transfer portal for better offensive linemen in the offseason. That's the answer. I don't. They don't have anybody walking through those doors that's going to make this offense better. I, listen, if they do put Criswell in, and, and I, I think they're desperate now, I think Sam is desperate, so who knows what he does. If they do put Criswell in and he – lights up the scoreboard and he turns it turns out that the offense flows better with him and they score more points. I don't know. I'll shave an eyebrow or something. I just, I don't see that being the case. And again, it's not to speak to, because I do think Criswell has potential. I absolutely do. My problem is with the rest of the offense. It's with the offensive line, the running backs, the receivers. I don't know that Criswell fixes that. I don't think that he does. Uh, Kennedy can't recruit, says Mr. Bloodline. Desperate millionaire Sam Pittman. Fish, I don't care that he made money. Like, I don't give a shit about that. You guys get so hung up in the kind of money these guys make. Whatever. Year four, it's not working. He's, if he doesn't make any changes, he's going to hit the road. I'll take Urban Meyer at this point. <laughs> I keep seeing his name brought up, and I don't know why. Like, the amount of baggage that dude, there ain't no way they're going to go after. Could you imagine Urban Meyer? Uh, we don't know if he'll fix it. We have to try and watch him get killed. Give me Gus, his talent. Urban wouldn't come here anyway. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, he's – I don't know that any more big-time jobs are going to come his way. He, he's just got so many – he's got so much baggage. Who cares about the money, uh, the W? Yeah. He wins, Ty? That's what – who wins? Who are you talking about? Well, y'all are just throwing names up against the wall, seeing who sticks, huh? Shout out to the Super Chats. Um, I think I read them all. Did I get them all? I think I did. I think I got all the Super Chats, man. We had a lot of them. Appreciate you guys. It's frustrating. I, I don't know what the answer is. I, I'm not I'm not on board with the just throw Criswell out there crowd. I just I don't think that would work. I mean, do it, but I – and maybe they will. They're desperate. They are desperate, and it wouldn't shock me to see him trot out there, but it's the rest of that team – it's the rest of that team that keeps you up at night. It's the offensive line. It's the receivers not getting open. You know, uh, does KJ hold on to the ball? Yeah, he does. And I know everybody wants to pile on KJ right now. Rightfully so. He makes mistakes too. But a lot of the time that guy is either running for his life or the pocket's collapsing on top of him. You know, for people to say that that's the only problem, you're not watching the offensive line. You're not watching the offensive line. They're they're bad. I mean, the level of of disconnect. There's no nobody's in sync up front. There's no fluidity with this offense at all. And it starts with the LOS. It starts with line of scrimmage. Starts with the offensive line. You know, you've had bad snaps, just bad blocking altogether. KJ's either running for his life, and even when they have tried to move the pocket a little bit today, it it, it wasn't enough. I'd I'd like to have seen more of that, but um. KJ made some mistakes, threw some bizarre, you know, options going through his reads, underthrowing and overthrowing. Nothing is in sync. Receivers have their own blame in this. Um, Guyton, as much as we pile on Kennedy, as much as we pile on Enos, we're not talking enough about what the hell Guyton's doing with the wideouts. But at the end of the day, if if your offensive line gives you no time to throw the ball, it doesn't matter who's back there. That's the point I'm making. Maybe Criswell will have a good moment. Maybe you throw him out there and he does okay. <laughs> Whatever that is. But um, I would be surprised. I don't know if I'd shave an eyebrow off. What would I do? If if you scored, let's say, let's say they do trot him out there. And again, I'm saying they could. They could trot him out there. He could be the guy. They might do that. I'm saying he's he's going to struggle like KJ. Will he struggle as bad as KJ did today? I I would hope not, but he could. He absolutely could. 
And I think he would have a short leash, too. I don't think the coaches would let him stay out there for very long. But let's say they do, and he tears it up, and he's the answer. Then I'll, I, don't know what, I don't know what I'll do. I'm not shaving my beard or my head. It's kind of sad we've come to that, though, right? Like, just to figure out what the hell they're doing on offense. It's just sad. Regardless of who, we, of who you want at quarterback, it's sad that we're at this point. One bourbon, one scotch, 100 beers. I ain't doing that. That's called alcohol poisoning. No thanks. Ed Orgeron would make a great head coach. He can recruit out of his mind. Smock, I'm starting to figure, figure you out piece by piece. Ed Orgeron would be a horrible hire. Just because he had success at a school like LSU does not mean he'd bring that here. That guy has so much baggage. There ain't no way in hell that guy's ever going to coach at a Power 5 job again. Not as a head coach. No way. Chad Morris could recruit too. Amen. Doing it at LSU and then doing it here is two different different things. What if KJ pissed the O-line off and the O-line said no thanks? I mean, that's a working theory. Maybe we'll hear about that some years down the road. Maybe maybe those guys will show up on a podcast somewhere and they'll talk about, yeah, KJ, KJ hit on my girlfriend. So all of us as a, as together on the offensive line decided that we were going to – we were just going to not block and tank his season. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Again, I think it's a reflection of Enos. It's a reflection of Sam Pittman. I mean, let's be real. They're in a lot of trouble. Um. 200 yards on offense, defense gave up 205. I haven't even looked at numbers. I have no desire to even look at stats. But, yeah, Arkansas had 200 total yards of offense against Mississippi State. You hold Mississippi State 1 of 10 on third down. 97 yards passing, 103 yards rushing for Arkansas. Um, Five penalties for 60 yards. You held Mississippi State to 85 yards passing. You let a backup quarterback. And you know, you held him. He's not the reason why they won, but they won with a backup quarterback. He did pretty good on the ground. They had eight penalties for 49 yards. One turnover for them, two for Arkansas. Arkansas had a fumble loss and an interception. Uh, KJ, 19 to 31, 97 yards. <laughs> 19 of 31 for just 97 yards. Mike Wright only threw the ball 12 times. He was 8 of 12 for 85 yards, a touchdown and a pick. He was their leading rusher, 11 carries, 60 yards. Marks had 17 carries, 42 yards. Poor defense, man. Armstrong, four catches, 35 yards. I mean, you know, KJ put the ball on the ground twice today. Poo Paul was all over the field. He had I thought Poo Paul looked pretty good. I mean, if there's any positive, Chris Paul looked good. I mean, he had 12 tackles, a TFL. Jaden Johnson had a TFL. Just one sack. That was Nico Davier. That was a good play by Nico. He's got what, two sacks on the year? They called Landon Jackson. Um uh, what'd they call him? The, the announcers called him uh, Lance Jackson or something. I don't know. I mentioned it in Discord. He didn't really have a great day, but he made. Uh, he almost had that pick. That was nice. Four tackles for him on the day. He gets credit for a pass breakup. <laughs> Not every day you see a defensive end with a pass breakup, unless it's a batted down pass at the line of scrimmage. They're saying the attendance was 71,000. I, I guess. I don't know. Arkansas falls to 0-5 in conference play. Two and six overall. They are the worst team at the moment in the SEC. Vanderbilt's 0 and 4. Auburn is 0 and 3. Auburn's 3 and 3 on the year, by the way. It stings. It stings that they are this bad. Yeah. All right. 
Um, no mouths on at, at the at the end of his career. Jack, is it the end of his career? I mean, how old is he? Fifty five. How old is Gus Malzahn? I I actually don't know. I don't know about I don't know about it being the end of his career. Fifty six is Bobby's point. Yeah, there. That's not the end of his career. I mean, I I'm not I'm not I'm not there yet. Where I'm not going to talk about. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait. But rest assured, Patreon will not. Patreon, we're gonna we're gonna start tracking. We're or, well, we're gonna we're gonna track planes. When if assuming they do if they if they do fire Pittman, Discord Patreon Discord is gonna be the place to be. Um, Dan Enos is a joke. Uh, Sam will finish the year here. He he probably will finish the year, but at the end of the year. I don't know. If if they do finish three and nine, I just how how do you bring that guy back for year five? You just can't. You can't. Not after four years. No way. I would say even if even with five wins, I don't think he should come back. All right, that is uh, that's gonna do it. We'll be back Monday. We're going to talk basketball. Of course, Arkansas has got Purdue. Again, I want to let you guys know, we will be live watching the game, watching the Purdue game, and, and then doing a post-game show. Purdue's going to be tough, man. That's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to watch. Monday, we're going to get caught up on everything that happened last night and, of course, today. So, yeah, I'm out of energy. I don't even want to watch football right now. I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of just want to go drink a bottle of whiskey, uh, smoke a cigar, and (laughs) I don't know. This sucks. Um, Appreciate you guys for being here. Agree to disagree. Maybe you guys are right about Criswell. I Again, I just – I don't think it matters who you put back there. That's my concern. I do think Criswell has a a high ceiling. I think Criswell could do some good – I just don't know that he's the answer this year because of all the challenges that are that are there on the offense. I uh, maybe I hope you guys are right. If they do make that change, and maybe that's what Sam was talking about in his post game. Um maybe that's the change they're gonna make. Maybe they do go to Criswell, but I don't know. I would almost I, I'll shave a mullet in my I'll shave I'll do the mullet if Criswell comes out and the offense is better. I don't care if they lose. If the offense is just better, if they just look better, I'll I'll just, I'll do the mullet. I'll do it. That's how that's how confident I am that nobody's going to have success back there. They're just, I don't know. It's it's really too bad. It really is. It's too bad for the players, the defensive staff, you know, special teams. It sucks that everything else is working and the offense is just this abysmal. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Um, Tertian says we can't we can't lose next week. Nope, they can't because they're on a bye week, <laughs> so they're not going to lose next week. Or wait, are you talking about Purdue? Hold up. Are you talking about Purdue? Because it's an exhibition game. I'm not that concerned about I mean, just go out and look good. I'm not worried win or loss. I, I want to see them go out there and, and just play, you know. Uh, careful, Ty, because it because at this point, one, Tuddy is an improvement. Well, no, I mean, I want to see better numbers. I want to see way better numbers on offense. I don't know. What do we consider success? 400 yards of offense? Have they done that yet this year? Other than week one, have they had more than 400 yards of offense? That'll be the marker. If Criswell can come out and the offense could score three touchdowns and 400 yards of offense, I'll, I'll do the mullet. I'll do it. Hell, I'll do it right here. Well, no. I, no, I won't do that. I'll go, to, I'll go to someone and have them do the mullet. I ain't going to do it. But I just have no faith. I have no faith in this offense. I have no faith in Enos. So, all right. I'll see you guys on Monday. This was a shit show. Today, Arkansas, Mississippi State, one of the worst games I've ever watched. Even if Arkansas had won, it was just a gross game. So, yeah. You guys uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. If you can, I hope your pro teams win. I don't know. I'm going to go crack open a bottle. See you guys Monday.